Welcome back to the HDR Masterclass. In this segment, we're going to be discussing the fundamentals of HDR. Now, so far we've been through examples, we've defined HDR, and uh, we've even talked about the benefits of HDR. Now, in this segment, we're going to be talking about fundamentals that will help prepare you for the next segment when we talk about the capture for HDR. So this segment is actually going to be important for you to understand some basic fundamentals of capturing for HDR. Uh, certainly, we're going, we, we continue to move towards the discussion of tone mapping. So this section here is actually important to prepare you for capturing. So let's start by discussing the how the human vision system works. Keep in mind, of course, that the human vision system is a, a biological uh, process that involves both the eyeballs and as well as the brain. And the important thing about the, uh, the human visual system is that it, it, it helps us to understand the difference between what we see as humans and what our camera can actually record. When we pick our camera up in the field, we see a, a, a beautiful uh, landscape, uh, lots of highlights in the skies and, and a beautiful land and, and vibrant colors. Well, that's what we see as humans, but that's not what the camera sees. So it's important that we understand the differences between what we as humans can see and what the camera is able to actually record. So let's talk about that. Now, the, the, the first concept to understand is that the human visual system can adapt to the various uh, light levels within a scene. And so this, this adapting is very understand, very important to understand because your camera can't adapt. Basically what it comes down to is that let's say that you're, uh, you're in a room and there's very bright lights that uh, are coming in from uh, say a large window and then there's darker uh, areas of the, of the scene in the room. Your human vision system can adapt when you look at the window and actually reduce the light intensity that your human vision will perceive. And then when you look over to the darker portions of the room, your human visual system will adapt to the darker portions of the room. So as you look around the room, your human vision, system, uh, vision is actually adapting uh, to the various light intensities within that scene. The important thing to understand is that your camera cannot adapt like that. Your camera is quite literal in what it sees. So the important thing is uh, to understand is the concept of uh, adaption. Now, your human visual system is actually a nonlinear, uh, which basically means that the uh, your human vision system will uh, be able to accommodate uh, the different light levels within a scene and uh, there's a lot of interpretation that is occurring within your, uh, your, your mind, your brain, uh, so that the various light levels are, are actually handled in a non-absolute manner. Your, your camera, by contrast, is very linear. The, the, the amount of light that is falling on the so photoreceptors of the sensor is very linear. And basically, uh, if there's a large amount of light that's falling on a photoreceptor, then it's going to uh, measure the intensity of that light in that photoreceptors uh, in a linear manner. And basically, uh, for a typical consumer-level camera, uh, 
that's going to be the 8-bit or the 0 to 128. The human visual system doesn't, doesn't operate like that. It, it's actually uh, accommodating the, the, the various uh, light levels within a scene in a, in, a, in a manner which is not fixed to a particular scale, in this case 128 uh, levels of tonal intensity. So nonlinear response is also important to understand. Now, your, um, uh, the human visual system is, is also uh, uh, able to adopt locally. So if you're looking at the window with very high intensity of light streaming in through it, your human visual system will actually make an effort to, uh, to, uh, t to consider that uh, area of the scene, the light coming in through the window in this particular example. And, and also when you look to the darker portions of the, uh, of the room, it will consider the darker portions. Basically, your, your mind melds all that together to form a contextual understanding of the scene, whereas your camera does not. It does not see context. It does not understand a window uh, versus a dark corner. The camera will, in a linear manner, very precisely measure the amount of light that is falling on the photoreceptors of the camera's sensor. So those are all very key points. So adaption is a very important uh, aspect of this uh, by which your camera has limitations. Local adaption is, is also very important. Again, your camera does not have the ability to uh, immediately adapt to uh, the various light levels within the scene. And the nonlinear response, and basically that means that the camera cannot see context. It doesn't understand uh, the scene. It measures the light levels within a scene, well maybe more correctly stated, it measures the light levels in terms of a linear scale of 0 to 128. So those are the very important limitations of your camera. And the reason that this particular topic is important is because what you see in a scene is not what your camera sees, for lack of a better term. Your camera has limitations. They're mechanical, they're electronic, they're optical limitations. The point and purpose of HDR photography is to be able to overcome or circumvent those limitations compared to the human visual system. Now, let's continue our discussion by talking about uh, another limitation that is associated with a digital camera. Let's talk about the dynamic range limitation. Now, the dynamic range, all right, is really the range of stops between black and white without clipping. Uh, it's kind of a mouthful, but it really comes down to this. It's the amount of light that a camera, a camera's uh, photoreceptors of its sensor is able to digitize into a numeric value between 0 and 128. That's that 8-bit uh, structure that uh, we've, we've referred to before. Now, the typical consumer camera has a, a limit as to the amount of light that it can collect from the black to the white, so, and, and without clipping. Now, clipping, as I've mentioned before, is a situation where the camera is unable to uh, provide a numeric value for the amount of light in a particular photoreceptor that equates to a pixel, where the, the value falls below zero, that's the black side, and where a value exceeds 128, that's the white side. Basically, on the black, the color black, is the photoreceptor has no 
light that is falling within it and therefore it has no numeric value. There is no light. Uh, on the white side, it's the amount of light that is falling into a particular photoreceptor that exceeds the capability of the photoreceptor to be able to digitize the amount of light. Obviously, uh, as long as the amount of light is greater than the floor of the photoreceptor's capability and less than the ceiling or the maximum amount that the photoreceptor can digitize, then the amount of light falling on that photoreceptor is said to not be clipping. So this is a, the, a very important uh, uh, aspect of our typical digital uh, camera is that it has a limitation to the amount of dynamic range that the camera has. Let's just take, for example, the uh, Red Epic. Now that has 13.5 EVs or 13.5 stops of dynamic range. Now that's uh, that's not even uh, close to what the human vision dynamic range is. Obviously it really depends upon a number of uh, variables, depends upon the person's eyesight, uh, the uh, whether or not there's corrective lenses involved and, and various other biological attributes of the human visual system. But, uh, you know, typically a human can see 23 uh, EVs or stops of light. And as you, uh, as you remember, we were talking about uh, ad ad adaption and uh, nonlinear response and those types of attributes that all play to allow the human to have a greater visual dynamic range. But our cameras don't have that kind of dynamic range, typically. So the Red Epic here, as we had just mentioned, has a dynamic range of 13.5. Now, if you just compare that with the Canon 7D, that has 8.7 EVs, or for, uh, to simplify it, it has 8.7 stops uh, of dynamic range. Now, this is important because when you pick up your camera and you point it at a particular scene, obviously the more dynamic range it has, the better it's able to digitize the light levels within that scene. It really is really as simple as that. A camera with lower dynamic range is going to have a more of a, ten, a tendency to clip because it's unable to fully digitize the amount of light that's coming into the photoreceptors of the camera's sensor. Um, let's just take uh, another camera here, maybe somewhere in the middle. Let's take the, uh, the Nikon D60. It has 11.4 EVs of dynamic range. Now, this list here is, it's for illustrative purposes only. It's only there to show you that the various cameras are going to have different uh, levels uh, or capabilities of being able to capture the, the amount of light that's falling upon the photoreceptors of the camera's sensor. Now, the reason that the camera's dynamic range topic is important is because HDR photography is attempting to um, compensate or uh, extend the dynamic range limitation of a camera. And I think you'll be m able to fully appreciate that as we move along in the course. So for right now, it's important to uh, simply understand that various cameras, and not necessarily uh, various cameras by their cost, but various cameras by their, the technology used and how the engineers decided to, um, to uh, uh, design the camera, its sensor, obviously its internal uh, computer and its optics even play a role in its overall dynamic range. But it's, 
most of the time, the camera does, well, I should say all of the time, a camera, a digital camera, does have a dynamic range limitation. HDR photography is attempting to cope with that limitation. The, you know, the term dynamic range, is just, just to kind of uh, to simplify it, is really the range between black and white. Uh, black is, uh, is no light level at all, and therefore no numeric value in the 8-bit scale. White is the amount of light that has exceeded the capability of the photoreceptor, and that would be uh, over 128 numeric value in the 8-bit scale. And, and you'll hear the, uh, the term contrast a lot, all right? And the contrast is really the difference between the different light levels. So there's a contrast between those two levels. There's a contrast between these two levels and between these two levels. So contrast is the, is the difference in the light intensities from one stop to the next. Now, this particular example is showing a situation where there is a large difference between the highlights in the scene and the, and the shadows of the scene, or the whites to the darks. This right here is a contrast. Now, the, the key thing is, uh, is the light levels within the scene, is that falling within the camera's dynamic range? We're introducing right here the histogram. And we're going to be talking about the histogram in much more detail as we proceed. The histogram is actually going to be a very important field tool by which you can use to assess the amount of light that is falling on the camera sensor. But for right now, let's just uh, use the histogram to make a, one particular point. And the point is, is that this histogram is indicating that there is clipping occurring in this scene. And this clipping is over on the dark side. All right, more on that as we get into histogram. And the dark side is, is over here in this particular area of the scene. So what this is doing is it's showing us that the camera is actually unable to capture all of the light levels within a scene. And of course when I say capture, I'm actually referring to the camera's ability to convert the amount of light that's falling into the uh, photoreceptors of the camera sensor into a numeric value. So here we have a situation where there's so much dynamic range within the scene that the camera is unable to fully capture all of the light levels within this scene, and therefore we have what is called a clipping scenario. This uh, left side is indicating a, uh, an HDR processed image, and you'll see here now that the exposure levels between the highlight and the dark side have now been equalized, where the image itself no longer has the problem of clipping. So that almost uh, pretty much summarizes what HDR photography is trying to accomplish. All right, now let's talk about this term EV. Uh, exposure value is actually what, it's, uh, what it means. And I really uh, don't want to uh, get you confused with the term EV. And it really is being introduced here because you're going to be seeing it uh, as you read about HDR, uh, perhaps take tutorials or listen to other presentations concerning HDR photography. They very commonly will refer to EVs, exposure values. It really can be, uh, uh, it can be simplified by thinking of an EV as a stop 
and these are these are the stops they're the common value stops here now the ISO International Organization for Standardization all right defines a an EV of one uh, I'm sorry an EV of zero as a a stop value of one over a one second period of time and uh, this is a chart that is indicating how an EV is defined so really an EV is the relationship between the uh, the aperture size these are the aperture sizes here the the typical ones and the amount of exposure time now so basically and a zero EV is defined by the International Organization of Standardization a zero EV is defined as a f-stop of one for a period of time of one second now for purposes of our photography uh, uh, practices as it when as in terms of HDR a zero EV is is really going to mean to us the the exposure settings where you have applied no exposure compensation more on that as we go but basically we'll think of the zero EV as the center point of our of our HDR capture sequence now keep in mind I'm trying to get you ready here for when we do talk about capturing for HDR I don't want to make you a scientist on all of this stuff you can really get very very deep into all of these these technicals but that's not what we're trying to do we're trying to get you to a point where you can take a good capture sequence in the field so that you have the maximum success possibilities when it comes to actually tone mapping or preparing your image which is uh, uh, we we call all of that HDR photography so for the time being think of an zero EV as the setting that it would be typical of your camera with no exposure compensation all right so in this segment I talked about uh, fundamentals of HDR which are quite important to uh, to understand in preparation for capture we talked about the human vision system as it compares to the digital camera uh, I talked a little bit about uh, the limitations of the camera in terms of dynamic range which is going to be important uh, to remember because in the field uh, when you pick up the camera and take a photo the the camera may not be able to capture all of the light levels within that scene and that's why we wanted to talk about dynamic range we also talked about EVs and uh, uh, we gave you a pretty good idea what uh, the EV means and uh, of course you can you can simplify that in, in your mind for the time being as uh, understanding that an EV really does in most regard uh, equates to stops so those are uh, a, a few important fundamentals in the next segment I'm going to be talking about the histogram the histogram is a very important tool that we use to assess the amount of light that is coming into the photoreceptor of the uh, photoreceptors of the camera so please join me for a discussion of the histogram which will be next and I'll see you there